Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Grid. Uh, my name is RC, and this week I'm going to kind of try to mix it up a little bit. I already said welcome back. I'm sorry. That's okay. Oh, welcome back, everybody who's but been anyway, here before. Who's been here. Welcome back, or again, for the very first time. Or for the first time. <laughs> but uh, my name is RC, and uh, I'm joined this I'm Mia. Week by Mia McCormick. What's going on, man? How are you? I'm good. So uh, the, the topic of what we wanted to talk about today was about inspiration, the kinds of things that, what do you find that inspires you? What do you work with? And rather than it just being me here, right, because there's no Scott, there's no Brad, I figured we would bring a couple of people on and just kind of do a little round robin, a little hot seat. So I am one of three that you will see tonight, and I bet you cannot guess who the other ones are. <laughs> so we'll also have uh, Mr. B. Collins, and we'll have Corey Barker here as well. But Scott is not here, right? So he is out in Virginia and doing the doing a shoot like a pro tour. Tour. If you want to be able to follow that, make sure that you go to kelby1.com slash live. Also wanted to point out before we started anything else, if you'd like, I would go over to layersmagazine.com. At layersmagazine.com, you'll see a series of different articles. If you haven't been kind of watching, we've been doing a lot of changes to the Layers Magazine website, and you're going to find a lot of articles for inspiration and things like that in this one spot. I do want to kind of bring this up because there is also a new feature called Boundary Warp that just came out for individuals that are using Lightroom. So if you're using Lightroom, make sure you come and take a look at this article that's here. It'll get you up to speed as well, get you acclimated to the new layersmagazine.com. I guarantee that you guys are going to dig this, but wanted to be able to just point that out as well. Now, uh, we'll just jump right into it. The, the concept of inspiration, and you've kind of started playing around with that here, and I'm just full disclosure, Mia's going to be on, and then immediately you have to go out to swim class, so she's not going to be hanging not out. Not me, I can swim. You can swim. It's right. for my son. So uh, you're going to be doing that, and then she's gonna, we're going to go to a break, and we'll go ahead and we'll bring Pete uh, in as well. We want to hear from you guys as well. So if you have a story about things that inspire you, we're kind of pulling triple duty here. So I'm going to be going through the chat. Make sure that you're on the chat, kellytv.com slash uh, the grid. Join the chat inside of there, and we'll pick up all of this information in this one space. And so Stephanie, nice, Stephanie has already jumped in. She's talked about her inspiration. But a lot of this idea came from two things. It came from, one came from, I've been watching CNN, I'm very addicted to CNN, and they were just doing this one thing that talked about the person that motivated me, the person that's worked uh, on making a difference in a person's life. And I was like, oh, like that's a mentor? Kind of, like a mentor, like that, you know, that teacher that you, that you had, uh, that kind of changes everything. And I thought it was a really cool thing in that they, they revealed what was inspiring to them, what was motivational for them. And I was thinking back to ourselves, uh, not necessarily a, you know, what was the one person, but what kinds of things, what stuff do you draw from uh, to kind of keep going creatively? And this is something that you explore in your inspirational series. Yeah, so this is something I'm really lucky to explore with people. That's what I ask photographers all the time, what inspires you? And you're right by bringing us on the show here to kind of talk about what inspires the team here, the content team here at Kelby, because I am in the process of completing inspirational interviews with the guys here on the team, and I'm really excited about that. And th I think our C's comes oh. out this month, so you'll get to see that, but Pete and Corey also talk about what inspires them. And what's really great, what I love about the inspirational series, because what I'm inspired by is other people's stories, but also it's almost addictive to watch somebody, you don't always think internally. You don't always think about what goes on in your head and what motivates you to do things. And a lot of times I feel like for these photographers that I bring in, especially with the women in the Trailblazer series, when they sit down and they start to talk about it, you kind of see the layers peel back and they almost don't know where it's going sometimes. And their inspiration is revealed and there's kind of an awakening that you see on the faces of people when they go through and they come out and uh, they're they're verbalizing what they connect with because it's not something we always do. I mean, do you guys sit in your living room at home and look in the mirror and think, what do I connect with when I shoot? Most people don't. It sounds very like Oprah Winfrey-ish, right? But when you see this happen on somebody's face during an interview, it's amazing. It's like the sun rises on their face. I love it. Or 
becomes very uncomfortable. <laughs> just, um, <laughs> you were so RC was a little nervous for his interview. Just a tiny just a little tiny... bit. In fact, I think I remember you being on the grid with Scott uh, beforehand, and he was heckling you a little bit about it because you were just really nervous about it. You know, it it's, Why? Why? Uh, it, you know what? It's one of those things where I mean, the grid's kind of a show where I get to talk a little bit about my point of view to mm -hmm. some degree mm -hmm. for some of the things that I do, but. Uh, I, I've become very comfortable speaking live and working in the space as an educator. You know, like first and foremost, I consider myself to be a teacher, an educator. Um, so I, I'm very good at showing techniques and showing tricks and showing things that I think that people need to kind of get up to speed. Projecting skills. Projecting skills rather than kind of talking Turning about that lens around. inward. And, and, and <laughs> it makes it very uncomfortable. And, and for anybody who knows me, like I'm not shy about talking about any of that stuff. No. Like, I'm not shy talking no, about not. what brought me there. But it was just something about the the concept of being like, all right, well, why? And, and having it in front of your face. And it just brought me right back to when I first started doing camera work and being so godly nervous. I think everybody, though, is uncomfortable to take that close of a look at yourself. Even even the greats that sat in that chair across from me, McNally and Heisler, beforehand, you can see a little of, like, the palm sweat, a little bit like uh, the, you know, I mean, there's there is a nervousness about not only you're connecting with yourself when you're doing it, but you're sharing that connection. And I think that's really interesting. A lot of people are always here and never mm -hmm. looking here. Right. And, and so uh, this show is kind of, uh, or at least this inspiration thing, is kind of a little bit of a springboard for that. Mm -hmm. It's to kind of get you guys starting to think about the kinds of things that you think about to kind of get the creative juices flowing. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you guys find that interesting enough to go take a look at the Kelby One interview series. Because I think that there's a lot of stuff in there that is really good. But enough about me. Let's get and put it on you. Let's talk specifically about you. Um, you do a lot of work and obviously do a lot of work on tech and things like that. But where do you go like to get that kind of spark, to get that kind of spring in your step to be able to do stuff? I mean, you have to pull it out of people, mm -hmm. but you can't work in a negative. I mean, no, but that is a space for me specifically that I thrive in because I love developing people's stories. I love giving people the opportunity to kind of come out and release like that. And just finding the stories in general, finding people that have, everybody has a story, whether it's, you know, you feel like it's a small story in the scheme of things and other people have like you monumental things that happen in your life that make it feel like, you you know, you've lived the world, been the world over in maybe 30 years or 40 years, but, 30, 30. <laughs> but, but, um, I love finding those stories in people. So I'm the kind of person that has no problem just talking to somebody on the street and find, trying to find out what motivates them or what their background is or where the inspirational things could come out of their life. But then personally, I, um, what I feel most creative and most connected is, and I think I kind of made this analogy the other day, is it, for me it's in nature. I think that when you feel really connected to something, and I might go into a kind of a weird territory here when I talk about this, but I think about people um, of great faith, when you have a, a really um, great faith specifically in a religion. And maybe when it is that you, when you walk into that building, whatever religious building that is, you feel an opening like a rise, like an opening, like the bars kind of come off your heart and you start to feel, um, you know, this inner thing, spirit, whatever coming out. And that's when you feel most alive and able to think clearly. And maybe even right after that, able to create for me, that happens specifically in nature, in the mountains, in quiet, in that kind of environment. When I get up to, I was in, uh, over Christmas, I was up, um, in the mountains of Georgia and I could feel, even though it was rainy and foggy and nasty and miserable, I could kind of feel just being out there, those, the bars of everyday stress and work and everything just kind of like popping off my heart and being able to, to see clearly because you're constantly got all of this stress and stuff in the way of your vision. And I feel like I don't see clearly on an everyday basis. If you were to come into my office and say, create something right now, it's like, um, well, uh, I, I don't have that vision to be able to produce something that I'm connected to. That for me is a place where I can produce something I'm connected to. Right. So it's, so you have to get out and kind of be one with the world. Cities don't do it. That sounds so zen. Like I'm on a Himalayan mountaintop, like, mm, 
But I think it's a, but I think it's a good thing. But cities don't do it. It's not like you can go to New York City and walk down Fifth Avenue and be like, oh, I'm connected to this. I love those scenes, urban scenes. I love, and I do like to capture that. But before I ever go to that place, I have to clear in a place that is natural, where there's not a lot of people and nobody is here or here, and it's just like fast and open. And okay. That, and, and that gives you kind of the spot to be able to dig a little bit and find stories and do stuff. Um, specifically, one of the things that I thought that you did that was very well that, uh, that I thought would be a good avenue for you to talk about was what you just did in Tallahassee. And I did kind of want to bring that up. I was springing it up on you. I apologize okay. for that. But uh, you went out to Tallahassee recently. Yeah. So um, I feel very strongly um, about advocate work mm-hmm. in several different uh, causes or areas. But so this week I was in Tallahassee. Tallahassee for the American Cancer Society lobbying our Florida legislators to um, to give money for cancer research, specifically for early detection purposes, um, for underprivileged women, and for biomedical research. And so that's something that I feel very strongly about. My mom is a cancer survivor, and who and this at this point we're all kind of one degree away from cancer. Really, who? doesn't have know somebody right. in their life or be close to somebody. <laughs> Pete, right? we work with somebody um, that has had it. Mm-hmm. So I feel pretty strongly that it's the fight of our time. In, and you know, I mean, every kind of generation has a fight and this is the fight of our time. And I think that um, what better to, when you're looking at the budget, allocate money for than to bring biomedical research into the state where your constituents live and where cancer is in Florida specifically you know, in the top three of new cases diagnosed every year and of people dying of it. So it was an interesting experience. Uh, it was, I got to, you know, I shot for them their, um, their rally up at the Capitol. And uh, it, was, uh, it was a very interesting experience. The first time I specifically have ever sat down across, you know, an office when they're like, you have five minutes, go. Oh, okay. <laughs> How can you say no to cancer research? Right, now, here's a, so here's a question that I have. Do situations like that, motivate like fuel and do something because this isn't your first time like for those who don't know like you were a journalist like yeah but you that's have spent- very different very journalism is very different than advocacy because right. you know i am I'm, I'm committing towards a cause and i'm trying to convince you you're, it's almost like sales like i'm trying to convince you to spend your money here right. but it's something that you ha- i have to believe in and i I do feel very strongly in working with organizations that are working to make the world a better place. I feel like this is really going right. into like a rainbow. <laughs> no, I think it's a good, I mean, but I think it's a good thing. What I was curious about it, because I mean, you've done work in Haiti, you've yeah. done work in Thailand, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And now, this, so, and this year I'm hoping to go to Peru um, for two children's clinics, a group called um, the Community Health Council just got their 501c3, which is a certification for a nonprofit last year. And they have two, um, children's clinics in Peru, and my hope is to go there and and document what they do and create a video for them to be able to use to generate more money for what they do. And 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 so I've always wondered about that. I've always wondered if if taking up those causes or reporting on those causes around the world or doing all sorts of, like, does that provide fuel? Absolutely. Or does the nature provide the fuel for you to go chase that? Oh, those, in that case, it's both. Because when you know you're doing something that um, could really make a difference in people's lives. I think there's an amount of adrenaline that runs through your veins. There's amount, the, the blood just like ratchets up a notch, you know, and you're like, okay, this is something that could make a difference. This is what I have all of these skills and they're coming together to do something really important. Not that taking a portrait or, or shooting an ad campaign isn't important, but this is something that has rippling impact that you hope changes no. the world. Who doesn't want to change the world? There's, is there anybody that doesn't have a superhero complex here? I mean, you, you want to be the person that says, I helped change the world. So, but, and it's one of those things, like I'm about to start working on something like that, that I'm really excited about, like a personal yeah, project yeah, that I'm yeah. working on. And, and that's what it reminded me of that. Like, as we're putting all of this stuff together, I think that what happens is we get on the show and we'll go, well, take a look at this and take a look at that and read this or view that. But inspiration for how you work doesn't necessarily have to come from from those scenes or looking at pictures or looking at 500 px as much as i love those things it can come from a connection with nature and it has to be esoteric Mm -hmm. you have to have these conversations um it can come from advocacy like you're going to be where you know you spend a lot of time in cancer i'm about to explore a whole bunch of stuff with obesity Mm -hmm. and 
it, it's one of those things. Have you where, talked about that project yet on the ground? Um, not publicly. No, uh, I'm, I'm okay with talking about it. You are now. <laughs> it's uh, all right. So this is uh, so this is one thing that I'm working on that I think is kind of cool. Um, I was approached by a obesity nonprofit that pretty much turned around and said, "Listen, uh, this is what happens in the world when we go out and we take pictures of individuals, you know, age, you know, race." Uh, preference, all of that kind of stuff. The pictures that we show in the media are totally cool. Like, just don't make fun of anybody, don't work with anybody, and all that stuff. But when it comes to dealing with the obese, mm -hmm. every picture that we see of the person who's obese is the same picture. It's the picture from here, down, ill-fitting clothes, holding a cheeseburger, holding a soda, the picture of the back with the fat, and it, they look horrible, the, the, the situations don't do stuff, and the pictures that we work with show a bare level of stigma mm -hmm. towards that problem. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things where we don't do that with anybody else, but when it comes to working with the obese, apparently it's fair game to stigmatize them. So what we what they want to do, and one of the things that I want to work on with them is to be able to create a media gallery of images that can be used for you know non-commercial television news reporting nice. uh, research that just show pictures of obese people. Nice, yeah. rather than making a judgment. I mean, people have seen it all the time as photographers. You take a picture of a person, and whether the person is like this, or this or they happen to be in the middle of a sentence like those things form opinions about that kind of stuff and i don't think that it's in our we should let obesity be a problem and let scholars and you know news and all of that stuff kind of research and figure that out but we don't need the visual stigma of it consistently to be able to do that i don't think it's fair i think it contributes to body shaming and body dysmorphic body dysmorphic issues i think it contributes to issues of self-esteem mm -hmm. so it's one of those things where i'm like I think this is cool. So, like, I found this charge, and I'm like, I'm excited about it. I mean, and it's it's and it's something that as photographers, dude, we are horrible at that. Like, we have become a society in, in photography, in photography education. You guys, like, like not you guys specifically, but photographers out there have have been complicit in this for such a long time. Because what happens is they turn around and they go, you know what? Step one, get a hot model. And that's what we do. And we, we Photoshop and we take care of all of these different things. And we go, you know, this is what we're going to do. Yeah, you know, get a hot model. Get an interesting model. Get a hot model. This is how we retouch. And, and we, we now have gotten better where we're like Photoshop. And eh, we shouldn't use it, you know, that strict. But then when it comes to the obese, when it comes to two-thirds of our population. Or like it doesn't Or a third matter. of our population. Just, right. you know what, just move them aside. When you guys get your stuff together, you'll be dignified with a picture. Right. And I think that that's wrong. Anyway. Sorry about that. I, I, but I think that the first segment that we wanted to talk about Clearly, here... Clearly, he's not inspired at all. Clearly, he's not passionate about this at all. But that's when you, when you do a project like that, you can feel the connection. You can feel the passion. And that, that's inspiration. Right. And, and I think that that's probably the biggest takeaway that I, that I think people would want to have for this mm -hmm. is that rather than looking for the solution or, 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 or things like... There are other things that I think that people can use why not look for nature as a clearing would be mm. the first thing. Mm. And the second would be advocacy. And I, I, I think that there is no better model uh, than you with us here in the organization to be doing that kind of stuff. And I think that that's one of those things that's it's very, it's very, very worth it. Um, We're always so, talking about personal projects, right? That's right. That's right. Why not make a personal project be a good heart project mm. in the middle of all of that stuff? Mm. Now, when can we expect the next inspirational series? Wait, series? Oh, Wait, oh, whole then, series? No, no, then, no, no. Or the next interview? interview. Because yours so, is coming out this month, I believe, in the month of February. Is that the next one? Like, yeah, have and any then others that we will be released out? shortly after that. And we're actually <sighs> taping Corey's on uh, Friday, so I would be very happy if you grill him a little bit about it and make him feel really nervous about it before he gets free. No, no. Uh, I it's think he's going to be. Thing. It's so easy. No, it, it completely is not. <laughs> it's, it's totally isn't. I have, an, I have a newfound respect for being on the opposite side of that chair, and, and, and it's a skill that I think that. Um, the, the reason the interviews look easy have everything to do with the interviewer. And I think that that's something that you bring 
immense skill too. So I think it's one of those things where it still kind of sucked. <laughs> well, I have right. new ideas for series, so it would be great if... All right, well, that we're going to have to talk about in the office. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, so Mia, thanks for stopping by. Thanks yeah, for talking sure. a little bit about what it is that inspires you. Why don't we do this? We'll take a quick break. And we're going to switch this up and we're going to bring in Mr. P. Collins to talk to us a little bit about where he grabs that. We have some stuff right here before we go. Uh, Ram Constock says that that for him, Galen Rowell and Art Wolf were inspirations mm. to him. Mm. So if you don't know those, Galen Rowell is an amazing, amazing landscape photographer. I was, I was able to kind of go out and go take a look at his, his exhibit in California. Beautiful, beautiful work. And what we are going to do for the YouTube thing is... Uh, we'll go ahead and put a list of all of these individual things so that you guys can have a spot where you can do that. But let me not jump ahead. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit about more inspiration. We'll bring in Pete Collins and we'll have your questions right here on The Grid. See you guys in a bit. I was very, very fortunate to shoot on location at an unbelievable place. The problem was when I posted the shots online, people would go, oh, well, sure, if you get to shoot in a place like that, you can make great shots. They're right. So what we wanted to do in this class is be able to show you how some of those shots were created that looked like they were done in the multi-million dollar mansion, but we actually did them on an incredibly low budget. All you need to do is be a little clever and you can create some amazing images. Hey guys, I'm Eric Vallon. Welcome to my brand new Active Lifestyle Photography class. Lifestyle photography is all about capturing believable moments and capturing that ideal reality in an image. In this class, we'll look at the active side of people's lifestyles, at play on the beach, out for their morning jog on Tampa Bay, or in a yoga session. We'll look at tailoring the lighting for the mood of the activity we're shooting, and also how to capture that peak moment in whatever pursuit you happen to have in front of your camera. I'm Cliff Mountner. I've always envisioned taking Kelby One for an inside look at how I approach a real wedding. This is authentic. This is an actual client that has allowed me to capture their day and bring Kelby One along. You're gonna see how I approach every element of the day. We're talking about an overall view at my approach. I really hope you take a moment to check out my brand new classes, A Real Wedding, live and uncensored, only on KelbyOne.com. Welcome back, everybody. RC here. Uh, we're talking about inspiration, and we switched everything up. Now we have Mr. Pete Collins here on deck. What's going on, man? How are you doing? What are you doing? All right. Took a break, doing a class. I yep. don't want to say anything about it. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. But how are things with you? They're going all right. You doing know, good? It's, it's been uh, interesting times around here. I've got several projects I'm working on. The one I'm working on right now is an animation drawing project that I'm pretty excited about. And so, uh, yeah, having fun. Nice, 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 nice. Now listen, uh, talking about more inspirations, I have it on the prompter and I wanted to make sure that I mentioned it before I leave. Um, make sure that you take a look at uh, Ibarianex over ibarianex.net. If you haven't seen it, right, ibarionext.net. If you want to hear about some great interviews, when we're talking about the concept of interviews, he has a podcast called The Candid Frame that you can just listen to forever. 307 episodes so far. He's got a sweet voice. He's got a great voice, and he's got a great way to be able to interview. So you want to take a look at this podcast. I think this is going to be something that's going to be great for inspiration as well. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is uh, Go Photo Plus. I am going to be speaking here. I'm leaving next week to go out to uh, Dubai to teach at Go Photo Plus, February 5th through the 12th. If you are in the area, make sure that you go to golfphotoplus.com for more information. I think you will totally dig it. It's a great lineup of instructors that are going to be there. Make sure you take a look at that as well. Now, Mr. Pete, uh, we have individuals that have sent in some stuff. Okay. So let's let's hear a little bit about that. So Stephanie says, uh, good cinematography inspires me. This fall, watching season two of Fargo on FX, I was blown away by the color grading started me playing with split tones to be able to emulate it. So it looks like Stephanie's using the concept of movies to bring her photographic inspiration oh, yeah. for that. So I, I, I sit there and it drives my family crazy. I'll stop and go, look at how that was shot. Look at that setup or whatever. And uh, yeah, oh, movies for, I know Corey's gonna come on. And yeah, he's gonna, Cor Corey know, will take movies. Corey will talk <laughs> movies, so I, I'll even, but TV shows and stuff now, there's just, there's some amazing stuff out there that if you if you let yourself be open up to pay attention, 
there's just all kinds of visual stimuli that can can amaze you. Okay, all right. So, uh, so let's see. Luke says old photography books for inspiration. You can pick up lots of them cheap secondhand from bookstores and libraries when they sell off old stock. While techniques may have changed, good light on a landscape or in a portrait has not. Luke, that's probably one of the best things that you should keep in mind. What I do all the time for that is go to Amazon.com. And just type in any book. So, like, if we do this right now, you want some photographic inspiration? Watch this. Go to Amazon.com. And inside of here, let's just type in Cartier Bresson. I'm looking for shoes. So, <laughs> importantly. Right? So, there's the decisive moment. All right. Well, the decisive moment, I'm not going to do that. Right? So, apropos de Paris. Right? So, you take a look at this. This is what I do. I go in here. I'll take a look at this. And I'm not looking at the $29 one. You know what I'll do is I'll come over here, 32 U's from $8.32. I click on that. It shows me good, acceptable, perfect. <laughs> so I'll go find all of the different masters inside of here, right? I would do J. Maisel for me. So there are the books, right? These are books, obviously, that we produce here, right? I would recommend Light Jester and Color, and it's not about the F-stop, totally, Right, uh, Jamie Zell's New York. I have that book. Light on America. I have that book. The most beautiful place in the world. Come on, you can get a book of inspiration, and this isn't just that. I have this book actually. Look at this. From you have America. ten different people. This is who we were talking about before. Galen Rao, David Dubliet, and you have Jamie Zell in New York City. You have George Gerster talking about the Palouse, and you can get this for a dollar. So you can grab a whole bunch of different books and use books as inspiration. Obviously, the books that we do here at Kelby One are great fonts of inspiration, but you don't have to stop there. So I, I think you, that is a great, great pickup on that, Luke. Uh, but let's turn to you real quick. All right. Uh, you consider you're a photo, you're a Photoshop person, you're a photographer, you're an artist. I think Do it, all of the inspirations come from the same spot? No, I mean, not necessarily. But I think, I, you know, I was trying to sit over there thinking about this while you and Mia were talking uh, about getting down to the, to the main point. And I think what I am drawn to it is good design, not necessarily even like topographical design or whatever, but things put together well and simply. Like I will get excited about things like, I'm weird, but I love the Dyson... Uh, vacuum cleaners and the commercials. It's, I love good design, good engineering that works, mm -hmm. you know, and so I'll get inspired just by a bridge and how it's been put together and stuff like that because I think that goes down to my illustration side. I want to take complex things and make them simple and beautiful that convey deeper meaning. Mm -hmm. I hope that makes sense. And so I'm trying to do that also with my photography. So show the real soul of the person that I'm photographing, their portraits, and letting the people see the real whoever that is so that the parents go, that's my child, or, or that's, that's the scene. That, that's how I felt when I was at that place. So sincerity? Yeah, it, I think it's, I think it's a, a trueness, but uh, it's, it's kind of like a simple elegance that I'm always looking for. Uh, I love, I, I'm kind of a problem solver, and I love seeing other people who have solved problems in a simple, elegant way, because that's usually, it's easy to, to figure out a, an answer to a problem in a convoluted, complex way. It's the ones that you know they really understand something that can, can answer it in a very simple, beautiful, uh, direct way. I, I, I think it's, it, it's funny that you would, not funny, but I think it's, it's great that you would talk about what you're looking for from a photog from a photographic standpoint on how you would approach things. Because I think that what happens when we talk about inspiration, a lot of the times people are like, well, I'm just going to go to Flickr or I'm going to go to 500px or I'm going to go to Pinterest. And, you know, I'll just take a look at the 500px stream or I'll take a look at my Instagram feed and that is going to be inspiring. To me, I feel like that is just going to be copying. Right. And, 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 and what happens is, uh, and I know that Scott feels a little different about this kind of stuff, and we have difference of, differences of opinion about it, but it's like, that is, not, that is not a place for me to go find inspiration. That is a place for me to go find something to copy. And that is not inspiration, in my opinion. So when you talk about these kinds of things, what happens is we have these conversations where you're not talking about f-stop, you're not talking about shutter, you're not talking about things, you're talking about abstracts. Bruno Miguel Santos just finished saying, trying to combine my writing and my poetry with my photography. 
you're using words like sincerity for work depth That's so different than 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 taking a look at whether or not your inspiration is coming from words rather than there are pictures where right. there are lenses and, and well and, and really being inspired by principles and thoughts and uh you know inspiration is about the spirit there there's something that has to grab inside of you and and stir up something you're talking about with mm -hmm. y'all with the passion uh it needs to be something beyond what you normally have done something new you know i am great if you give me a new project for the first day of whatever that project is, I'm gangbusters because it's new, it's exciting, it's stirring up my soul. A lot of what happens with us is we start repeating that process over and over again. We get into ruts of, of practice, whether it's photographically or whatever, and it becomes less inspiring because we've already tackled that and we're not pushing ourselves to tackle something new. We're, we're regurgitating the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. And so I'm always trying to look for that new thought, that turn of a turn of a mind, mm -hmm. to think of new ways to to show something. And to I'm an I'm an illustrator, not just by drawing, but I want to show people deeper meaning mm -hmm. uh, in ways they might not have ever seen. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm just a kid, and I want my kids to understand what I didn't when I was a kid. All right. Uh, and so my do you kids, find your, I was my kids say, do you find your super, family as my kids are a super inspiration because a lot of what I do is I'm thinking how can I communicate these big issues to my kids and then uh, extrapolate that out to the rest of society. What kids? What do they need to hear? What do they need to see? That's where my my passion to go into my kids' books ha has mm -hmm. developed because. I want to talk to people about deeper issues in a way that that hits them that they understand. All right, and so and and we're not going to steal any more thunder because I think you do talk a, a good bit about this during the inspirational interview that you talk with me about it. But uh, one of the things that I think was interesting about this is the entire concept of words and the entire concept of truth, and and none of that has to do with let's go to 500 px. Let's go to this. So you're writing statements almost. You're 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 using these words and you're going, how do I use what happens with my photography skill to get sincerity, to get truth, to right. get, you know, humor or my, whatever. My my goal is not to produce just a pretty picture. It's to produce a picture with substance and right. value, not just for me cuz you know, a little trophy picture, but something mm -hmm. that conveys something that hits the heart. Right. Uh, the wonderful thing about imagery is, uh, and especially photography, when we look at a photograph, we we kind of take on that feeling of that photograph. It's, it, it's, a, it's an empathetic thing that goes on. If you see a picture of somebody smiling in a photograph, it starts to kind of make you smile. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I want, I wish we could all be more real because we tend to put masks on. So part of my journey is to help people take the masks off because that's my journey. I'm trying to take my mask off. We were so good at putting them on and putting on this happy face and doing all this stuff. And so part of my quest in reaching out to others is a, it's kind of a self-fulfilling thing. If I can help you take off your mask, hopefully that can help me take off my mask. Hope that, does that make sense? No, no, it totally does. It totally does. But now let, let me go back to, because I think that what happens now is, so let's go back to the subject of pictures. Okay. Right? And, the, and, and the concept of pictures. So then do you use any pictures for inspiration? Like, do you use books to kind of oh, yeah. inspi like inspire you? Uh, I, I probably, because I was an art major, go right. more towards paintings, mm -hmm. you know, uh, looking at Rembrandt and different things like that. that. There's some great photographs out there, but the problem is with looking at some of those portraits and stuff like that is I tend to classify them with that photographer and that person. Mm -hmm. Like, boy, I'd like to capture something like that, but every person is is unique. So I'm really kind of chasing after the principles about what I'm going to find, what I'm trying to accomplish. Right. So I would say I fall more into the category of, yes, I do look at different artists, different photographers, but I probably am more inspired by artwork, especially the, the masters. Okay. So, all right. So let's, if we would extrapolate most of that stuff out so far, what have we done? Right. And, 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 and I'm going to apologize ahead of time for those of you guys who are watching this, because I didn't want to necessarily make this something where you're just like, go to Yahoo, go to Google, take a look at these things. You get that almost every week from us at one point or another. I kind of wanted to have a little bit of a deeper discussion about most of this stuff. 
Um, so far, we've learned that you can go out and you know clear your stuff and work on that stuff, uh, disconnect from everything to find a, a, a better sense of kind of hearing your own heartbeat. I, I have to agree with Mia in that I went up to camp not so long ago. I was out there for like four days and being able to get away from everything kind of freed up a little bit and kind of gave me a little bit more grounding on that. So, so I thought that, that was kind of neat. Well, you're definitely more creative when you, you take out the stress factor. Mm -hmm. Stress is a great killer of creativity. So being able to unplug and go out is really good. Right. So then the second thing that we talked about is advocacy, right? Going out into finding a cause or finding something, something bigger than yourself, bigger than yourself. Yep. Thank you. I was trying to find a way. I was like, take somebody's cause, do something else. But it doesn't have anything to do with taking their cause. It has to do with leaving yourself. We spend so much time feeding ourselves that we get stuffed with our own junk. Being able to go and feed somebody else frees us up to enjoy uh, the buffet of life. How about yeah. that? No, yeah, that's a good one. I like that. I like that. Now, and then, so then we yes, talked about... thank you, Corey. <laughs> He's Corey. You like, can write that down. What was that? <laughs> uh, the, the next thing that we talked about is we talked about books and inspiration. And I think books is probably something that... that um, Books is something that I think is very, really interesting because what happens is I amass a lot of books and I think a lot of books are really, really good. And the first thing that I usually think to myself is, well, how is that any different from going to 500px? Or how is that any different from going uh, to these other websites? First off, I think that you're just overloaded on things on websites like 500px and Instagram and thing, and Flickr uh, looking at everything else and everything just comes through so quickly. Uh, I, one of the things that I like about photography books and art books is the fact that I'm not necessarily looking at the books that come there as, wow, look at that lighting setup or look at that design or look at that thing that happened. I tend to look at photography as uh, mechanics and execution, right? So photography, f-stop, shutter speed, where you place your light, how you place your light, all of that stuff is just the mechanics of photography. Once you learn the mechanics of photography, you have to execute an idea. You have to execute a concept. You have to tell a story. You have to tell something. You have to say something. Once you learn how to play, you need to go play something or say something to somebody. And uh, what is that something that you're going to say? Are you going to say something positive? Are you going to say something negative? Are you going to say something, you know, powerful, not powerful? Are you going to, what statement are you going to make? So when I look at photography books and I look at nature and I look at all of the different masters that have gone and done stuff, I'm trying to think to myself, what were they trying to say when they made this picture? How did the things that they put in that picture achieve or not achieve what they were trying to say? And does that connect with me? So that kind of investigation through those books kind of gives me tools. I mean, look, I, I always tell people, right? Heisler, Maisel, and McNally, those are the three gods I pray to. My work is nowhere near any of them. Not, not in terms of quality, but it's not even stylistically the same. But that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at books and I'm looking at inspiration about how does that stuff get broken apart and, and taken apart to see what their intention becomes. I find it interesting that you would talk about most of this stuff because I've never really thought about it. I take a lot of pictures of my daughter, but I don't use my daughter as a basis of how to be able to explain myself or explain my work. You're using your children, not using, but you're working with Oh, your, I use them. <laughs> you're working with your kids and you're working with your connections with family to figure out a way to tell a bigger story. Well, yeah, because, I mean, a lot of people know I'm, I'm happy-go-lucky and all that, but I've got a, a deep philosophical side to me too. I, I think uh, a lot of ways about deeper issues. I was in Thailand for almost six years as a missionary. Uh, and, and so I believe inspiration, there's a lot that goes on with your, your core beliefs in there. And you find things that, that set off the tuning fork of your, your beliefs and you go, yeah, I want to chase after that. Um, but I also lost my thought completely when Corey set up. <laughs> <laughs> Which is something that which is something that that can happen. Well, yeah, um, uh, but what happens is that we tend to uh, think that we live in a little box, and if I can just get my stuff right, mm -hmm. and if I can just do my little art or whatever, and and a lot of times what really inspires me is when I see people who are 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 giving out like just like you talked about with advocacy people that are moving me because they have done something beyond the expected mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I just, I think it really makes a big difference when you, you take time and go, okay, who am I? What do I really believe? And how can I take that belief and let it be the fuel for where I want to go? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So every time I'm doing something for my family, or with my family, it's under the basis that I'm trying to love them and raise them and give them, uh, an experience, uh, that, that shows them love and shows them truth and, and helps them get to where they need to be in life. And, and that's what inspires me. It, it's, it's building those foundations. And, you know, in a lot of ways, I was, I kind of raised myself, you know, me and TV. And so I think about all those kids out there that are kind of on their own. I love to do stuff that can maybe give them a little hope and a little nudge in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Now, I was I was bringing up some stuff here because I think that what's one of the things that I'm going to try to see if I can find this very quickly. Um, mm. we're, we're talking about all these highbrow concepts. I mean, we, we're not just going take this one book and take this one website and work with these kinds of things. We're, we're trying to offer a, a different way for you to take a look at what it is that you're looking for. And I think that Daniel Gregory is one of those people that does that extremely well. So visual literacy, if you haven't seen this on the Kelby One website, a guy that can actually help you talk about intention, right? So this is our Kelby One website where we do all of this kind of training. This class will change how you see things. He he has got a gift for bringing most of that stuff out and working with inspiration, kind of digging through most of that stuff. Going beyond the the, the surface and getting down to, you know, down to the base of what's going on. Mm-hmm. And, and let's talk about the deeper issues so that you can be freed up to really do what you want to do. Yeah, I think he does. I think he does great work, great yep. work for that. So uh, I, I want to apologize ahead of time for just continuing to walk, to walk down here. Uh, Anonymous 63241 says, I agree with the books. I do get inspired when reading graphic design novels. Uh, mood boards. People talked about mood boards as being a good uh, set for inspiration, right? Using Pinterest for mood boards. I think that, uh, uh, Johan, I think that you are definitely in a good spot when you talk about mood boards because what happens is you put a whole bunch of different things together, either in 500px or in Flickr or on Pinterest, um, to kind of evoke a mood. And I think that people don't necessarily do that. I think what happens is sometimes people just go to 500px and go, I like that, I like that, I like that, I like that, I want to copy that. And it's good to see that people are talking about it to go, it evokes a certain amount. It evokes a mood. It evokes this. You'll hear people talk about music, how music is something that's very inspirational to you. Uh, I use music a lot, a lot more than, than I care to think of. Like I'm a big Hans Zimmer uh, fan and I listen to a lot of Hans Zimmer. I listen to a lot of Chopin. I listen to, um, that kind of, I listen to very sad music actually, but I feel like when I'm driving around and I'm thinking, I'm pulling all of those feelings out and I'm pulling all of those words out that go, okay, I have a word, I have some colors, I have a concept, this is kind of what I want to go for. You're being moved so that then you can create something that moves other people. Yep. I think another thing that we forget about in inspiration is community. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. we tend to be lone wolves a lot of times, but it's when I see you doing a project or Mia doing a project or, or somebody online that says, hey, look what I'm doing, look how I'm serving, look what I'm doing, can really be inspiring. And we forget that a lot of times. We, we forget that the people around us, even in the, the chat room and stuff, can really inspire us to do something. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it just, I think community Ooh. is a, a, a big deal. Yeah. So, uh, 6241 just finished saying you cannot, you cannot free open to be inspired if you struggle with the settings. The technicalities need to be fully learned in order for your brain to be open for inspiration and creativity. Scott's books are excellent to get you over the technical hump. Now, I would agree with one of those two statements. I would agree that Scott's books are good to get you over the techno hump, not just because he signs the check, though. Um, but it's funny because it's, it's, it's the technical ability I think is important. Like, do you think that it's important to be technical in order for you to be creative? Well, here's the thing. What is your goal? At the end of the day, uh, I hate absolutes. It says, yes, you need to do this. Yes, you need to do that. If you are a lumberjack chainsaw artist cutting bears out of big old hunks of trees, you just need to know how to use a chainsaw. Whereas if you're creating, you know, intricate 3D designs in wood, you may need to get down to the the minute chisels and stuff like that. Depending on where you're going and your goal and your output will determine what you need to do. So I know some people that 
you know, I think about some people that I know that aren't technically savvy with their cameras, but produce amazing results because they have a passion and an eye for what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, the, the technical can become a, a stumbling block, but for most of us, it becomes an excuse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't do that until dot, 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 or if I just had this, I could dot, dot, dot. And I think, you know, we've got to watch out about that because we love things to answer our problems instead of our heart and our mind answering the problems. Yeah, I remember, uh, now I wouldn't cut to my, yeah. I wouldn't cut to my, <laughs> don't cut to my website, don't cut to my screen, <laughs> but there are some things, uh, uh, let me see if I could find a good spot. Yeah, that's not going to be a good spot. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to let you guys do this on your own. Uh, <laughs> I'm but, enjoying the the slideshow that I'm seeing. Um, no, if only because it, it, it's definitely yeah, it's definitely a not safe for work setup. <laughs> uh, but there's you can cut to this now if you need to see something that I think is interesting. Uh, here's a guy named Ryan McGinley, right? Uh, he was one of the youngest artists to have a solo show at the Whitney Museum of Art. Right, great voice. Part, uh, known for photography, came out of Parsons. He shot a lot of stuff with a point issue camera. So, yep. you know, what do you do with that? Jeremy Coward didn't know meters inside of his viewfinder. He didn't know there was a meter for like a year and a half. You know, uh, there's, uh, there's people that shoot in portrait mode that create some of the best work. So, I don't know. And I'm not saying that that's positive or negative, and I'm not saying that it's good or it's bad. It's just there are people that where their voice kind of trumps their, their technical ability to do stuff. So I think it's an interesting thing. But why don't we do this? Take why don't we go ahead and take a break, right? Because now we've talked, you know, we've talked about passion, we've talked about esoteric, but there are sections like Hollywood and, and media and things like that that do offer sources of inspiration. How do you mix that? And I think that there's no better person to talk about that than Mr. Corey Barker. He will be on after the break. Stick around. We'll be right back here on The Grid. space at squarespace.com. Hey, we have a very special guest on the grid. It's amazing. <laughs> it's Adam L. Micaias. Yeah, this guy's incredible, but here's the thing. He's also, as good as he is, he's very, very humble. So what we're going to do his bio for him. Now, yeah. Adam is a music photographer out of San Diego, California. Unbelievable stuff. Incredible. But he's not just a great photographer. He's like a social media phenomenon. Right. He's got over 450,000 Instagram followers. And I think that that speaks to how well he interacts with his community in the world of photography. His business stuff is incredible. He's here doing a Kelby One class, but we're going to get him on the grid. Right. So all you have to do is send in your questions. You want to hear from Adam himself? Use the hashtag AskElMachias. See you guys on the grid. Take care. Welcome back, everybody. RC here on the grid. I've got a variety of different hosts, but I have the pleasure to have my coworker and partner in crime, Mr. Corey Barker. What's going on, man? What's up? What's up? How you doing? I'm good. Good. Keep him busy? Uh, very. <laughs> you don't really kind of walk and, and, and bother Corey when he's kind of in his office because you just see, all you see is this. Every and it's always the, awesome. It's always every, great things. Every now and then a few sparks or smoke flies out of my ears. And You're like, what was that? that? You know. uh, it's all uh, under control, though. I got to give, okay, give you props on this. I'm going to do this right now before I go anywhere else. Uh, where, uh, where is your page? Uh, Corey oh, Barker right, right here. So, Corey, uh, so go to Facebook.com slash Corey PS 3D. All right, and take a look at that. I thought this was kind of neat. You did this. This morning. Just driving to work. So he's driving to work and he's like, hey, yeah, I'm you on, know what? I'm on my way in this morning and I just took my phone out and yeah, I took a picture while driving. I do not recommend this, but... Um, Use probably an Archon mount or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Something yeah, totally you know, safe. I actually dude. stopped just... on the middle of the road and took... No, but um, <laughs> no, I just took it and just wanted to get a shot. I was like, you know what? It'd be kind of cool to have like a cool chase scene or something like that. Were you listening to John Williams when you were doing Actually, this? Actually, no. I don't remember what I was listening to, but... Um, Catch but up, I just, probably. I just, I just, but there was a car. I didn't want to get anybody's car, you know, because you don't want to get license plates, which I could have blurred out, obviously. But, right. but I, I took the picture, and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And then I got here this morning, and, you know, it was one of those things I talk about. It's the 30-minute composite challenge I do to myself. 
and I, I haven't done one in a while where I just take an image or two and give myself exactly 30 minutes to come up with something. Now, at the end of 30 minutes, I have to stop whether I've got something or not. That's the point of the exercise is to you know, limit your time and resources and really force yourself to come up with something pretty cool. And that's what I did this morning, and it actually came out pretty good. And I actually used, you know, had some people ask me, where did I get the vehicle, the Star Wars vehicles? Those are actually from Pixel Squid. They've got a new site that they just launched, and no, I'm not getting paid to pitch this, but it's really cool. You can go and actually download a whole bunch of cool Star Wars models and actually uh, be able to manipulate them in 3D in Photoshop. It's not actually 3D object like I'm used to working with, but it's a little bit different, but it's still really, really cool to play around with. Nice, nice. All right, so all already people are, uh, Johan jumps in, Corey, is you creating inspiration movies and how do they influence you in your work? How? It, it, how is your, you? is, okay, is it, is it movies? Like, is that your thing? Only your, well, like, I mean, you're not, are just, you a just saying I'm inspired guy? by movies is incredibly simple, putting it in incredible simple and simple terms. Right. Um, I have been a movie fan since I was like two or three years old. I mean, there, my mom tells me there was a time I actually remember the movie The Rescuers. She said I memorized that movie from beginning to end. I don't remember the word Rescuers. For word. So it, I mean, it goes back to you know way back when. But there's so many aspects of movies that I draw inspiration from. Um, it's posters. It's movie trailers. It's you know the movies themselves. It's just, and it's the the trick is, you can't just watch a movie and think you know, an idea is going to land in your head just by watching a movie. And this is something I was talking with uh, about Mia yesterday, is you've got to train yourself to recognize that spark of an idea. Now, like, for instance, when I'm watching a movie trailer or something like that, you know how movie trailers are fast-paced, they're quick edits, they're flashes, they're like that. Mm -hmm. You might catch something in that split second that you didn't, you wouldn't normally have seen before. But the thing is, you've got to train yourself to, to have your radar on to catch that. Because everybody says, where, where do you get your ideas from? I was like, their ideas are everywhere. The difference is you have to train yourself to recognize them. Mm -hmm. But you have to, it's, they come fast. You know, like people say they get a spark of an idea. That's why they say a spark of an idea, because it's like that. Right. You don't catch it. You've got to run with it. But that's, that's only half the battle. Once you have the idea, then you've got to figure out a way to execute it. And uh, for me, that's where their Photoshop comes in. And, so. and, 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 and that's one of the things that I thought was great for you to kind of round out most of this stuff. And, you know, surprise, you guys were mm. going to get a list on this. And it was going to be a little bit more esoteric. But I think that the two things that you do for this is that you speak to the concept of training. Mm -hmm. You speak to the concept of dedication. Mm -hmm. And you speak to the concept of uh, a task, like 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 a goal to that. So it's not it's just, are you inspired problem. by movies? Yes, you're inspired yeah. by movies, but that's not really kind of where you're getting your inspiration. Right. You're actually getting your inspiration from the focus that you put into it. Mm -hmm. like, it's the wow factor I'm looking for, and I find I tend to find it in movies. But and that's what I'm, and I, I guess I'm looking for more of an idea in a movie, you know. And every now and then, this is something I'm always doing. I always tell people. Yeah, I'll get an idea and then I'll create an original piece from something I mean, I've seen in a poster or a movie or something like that. But I'll often tell people when they're starting out, go and if you see a poster you like, go and try and mimic that poster exactly as it is. You know, there's no cop you know, there's no copyright infringement when you're learning, as long as you're not posting it to try and sell something. But copy a poster as it is. What that does is that hones your technique and your <laughs> skill. You're doing you know, and all along the way, you're probably going to discover something that you know, the artist that originally didn't, didn't think of, or you might have, hey, wouldn't it be cool if I did this? And that's something I always do is I tend to pepper it with my own flair, if you will. Right. Yeah. So along the way, you know, an idea breeds another idea, or, you know, just, you just kind of, you know, it's like, what, I forget what movie I saw, but there was about writing. It was that movie Finding Forrester with uh, Sean Connery? Okay. Long time I haven't ago. seen it. Well, it's about authors. <laughs> and one of the cool things I took away from that movie is, he says, in order to get inspired to start writing, just start writing doesn't matter what it is just start doing it and eventually a rhythm is going to get started and you're eventually going to get into a, a mindset where you start to think creatively and I think that works with art as well just go in and start playing around and then that one moment's going to hit you where ooh, that's mm -hmm. cool then you run with it and take off and then something's bound to happen with it so, so and, and, and I think that I don't want to ask too many questions because I was already just I'm looking at the chat and you already saw me jump in and go hey 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 I want him fresh for Friday's interview okay so apparently I'm like Tipping, I'm, I'm on a sacred cow, oh, so yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, what movie's coming out February 12th? Deadpool. Deadpool? Okay, yes. wonderful. Now, here's what <laughs> happens, right? So just, just to kind of point out, just random side conversation. Uh, Corey can tell you pretty much everything about every movie that's been ever made, ever. Like, his level of knowledge on movies mm -hmm. is encyclopedic. I, on the other hand, they play a game with me which says, what seminal movies mm -hmm. have you not watched? Yeah. 
And I'm like, yep, nope, haven't seen it. There oh, are a handful of historically iconic it. films that this man still has not seen. Godfather, haven't seen yeah, it. Still hasn't seen it. Yeah. Uh, 16 Candles, haven't seen it. Yeah. Uh, Tell well, me you've seen Breakfast Club. Weird nope, Science. never seen it. Weird Science, I got. Oh, Weird Science, so- okay, there you go. All right, <laughs> I got something. a cool story right, about Weird something, Science. something, yeah. But, like, yeah. I've never seen it yet, but, like, other than <laughs> Ghost, uh, haven't seen it. Mm. No, Titanic, mm-hmm. haven't seen it. Well, Ghost, you can probably go find. Platoon, oh, haven't seen it. Yeah. If you're going to watch a Swayze movie, watch Roadhouse. I haven't seen it. Roadhouse. See what I mean? <laughs> it's just things like that. It's just so bad. But um, but but the concept of, of now, this creative challenge that you do for yourself, do mm-hmm. you do it all the time? Is it something that you do well, I mean, daily? I mean, or? Like I said, it's been a while since I, before this morning's one, I, it's been a while. And that's largely because I'm still trying to finish up a book I've been working on. A lot of people are aware of. Trust me, it's on the way. It's getting very close. But um, it's something I tried to uh, put myself on at least once a week. You okay. know, it's a 30-minute thing. It just keeps, you know, like I said... It's not the exercise. The point of the exercise isn't to come up with a beautiful image in the end. You know, a lot of times I do. But the point of the exercise is to engage your mind with the limited resources you have and solve a problem. You know, make something out of nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, and you'll carry that to your next project. You know, you'll start to think about it. Well, this, you know, what, what do we do here? And once your brain is used to thinking creatively and coming up with. Um, solutions with limited resources, it becomes habit. It's, it's very habitual. And as you start to ch- take on bigger projects, they, be, they seem to be easier because you know how to, to approach the problem. So yeah. it's just training your brain. Have you yeah. seen The French Connection? Of course. I haven't. Yeah. I didn't see the sequel. Of Go. Did okay. you see Fort Apache of the Bronx? Guess, with no. uh, Paul Newman, Fort Apache of the Bronx, old movie in the no, 70s. I guess not, yeah. So that would be something that would be really, really hard to be mm-hmm. able to do. Filmed in the area that I lived in, in the South Bronx, mm, in okay. Fort Apache. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. The people are naming movies. They're like Top Gun. I haven't seen it. Top, of course. I, we did the we did the Photoshop World keynote the, thing. The key, yeah. So I've only seen the part up to the section of where I well, was in the, the keynote. Year, and even the it. year we did Star Trek. Uh, I, as a as a Photoshop world theme, we had a lot of fun doing. That was one of the funnest shoots we ever did. Still, he's uh, hasn't seen pretty much any of the Star Trek. He hasn't even seen any of the new Star Trek. I haven't seen any of the Star Trek movies. Yeah. None of them. Yeah. I haven't seen any Star Trek episodes. Yeah. I've never seen like any like old, new, new generation Deep Nothing. Space Nine. Yeah. None of it. I haven't seen any of it. Two thousand and one Space Odyssey. I haven't seen it. So we can't do any Shatner or Spock jokes around him. He, he, he won't get it. I, I don't. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's I suck. <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. But but the, but that I thought was kind of really cool. Is Joe Conzo in here? Oh, all right. I just got to point out something that I think is really, really, really cool. So Joe Conzo, um, this is something. So I'll leave you guys with some inspiration, some recent inspiration that I just found. So this is how this is how it kind of worked. So I'm so glad he's here because I think he's got some stuff that is amazing. So. It started with somebody else. It started with Camilo Jose Vergara's New York. This was an article that I saw on Mashable. And it talked about New York City. So I was born in New York City. I was mm-hmm. born in uh, Fort Apache, right, 758 Kelly Street yep. in the South Bronx. And a lot of the times, people don't understand what happened in the South Bronx. The South Bronx was just uh, burning. I mean, right? Howard Cosell, I think they said uh, in a game, had to- told people that he was burning. So I, I, you know, I was born in 74, and I was out there. And... To me, this was my reality. Like, this is what it was like for me to grow mm-hmm. up in the Bronx. Yeah. And, I, you know, I came when from... When your jungle gym was a, an old car. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and this, this, was what, this is what it was like growing up. And this guy had some great portraits mm-hmm. to be able to do that. And I'm like, man, this reminds me of what it was like growing up. This is what it was like growing up mm-hmm. in that area. Like the movie Beat Street was filmed. Like a scenes were filmed in my building. I mean, it's hard to look at that image and, say, and think that's the U.S., you know. That was it. Yeah. And so one of the movies that they did was Fort Apache the Bronx. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I've been obsessed with trying to find black and white photography of that era. So mm-hmm. 70s, 80s of the South Bronx um, because they speak to me as a person. Mm-hmm. That's where I came from. Those are my roots. Yeah. Now I'm here and doing all that stuff. And in the middle of all of that, I found uh, Joe Conzo. So Joe Conzo Photography, not only was he from New York, like not only was he from the Bronx, but he talked about all of that stuff, like that era of hip hop, like the birthplace of all of that stuff sure. happened mm-hmm. in that area. I moved from there to 172nd, right where like the start of Zulu Nation was in Africa, Bambada, oh, and all wow. that stuff. Yeah. And I'm looking through some of his images. And while to a lot of people, people will be like, ah, that, like that's what you find that, that's like inspiring. And I'm like, 
it, it, bad as it may be, I, I was like, this was it's your home. youth. You know, that's that was yeah. This was what it was like, and 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 this is what it was. This was the reality of growing up with most of that stuff. And I look at that stuff, and I go back there all the mm-hmm. time. And the Bronx has taken such a big, big change. And I, I just absolutely loved. Uh, Joe Consul's photography and it was one of those things where it's like I put it out on Twitter and I was like man this guy's really cool he's doing some amazing stuff so I wanted to kind of give him a shout out for most of that uh, if, if you want to see more of his work go take a look at joeconzo.com so wanted to point that out mm-hmm. great stuff uh, wow that looks like St. Athanasius um, but anyway great stuff great stuff so I like connecting with the past mm-hmm. you like connecting with challenges self-imposed guidelines yeah uh, you use Hollywood for inspiration, but and, uh, and I will say lately, and I'm the last thing I wanted to do was take on another social media, but where I've been getting a lot of cool ideas lately uh, is Pinterest. You'd be surprised amount of ideas are floating around in Pinterest. You know, just different design. Just type a you know a category. Just do like sports ad or movie poster, and boom, you just get you know, pages and pages of just all kinds of cool stuff. Now, I mean, it's not all great, but it's a matter, again, like I said, it's training your mind to see what really, and, it, and it's individual. It's going to be per person. You know, what blows me away isn't going to blow, you know, some people away. I mean, I'm going to respond to things very differently. So it's really what a matter of responding to what you like. And that's another thing I've always said too. Why, why do I do a lot of the images I do? Because it, look, it looks cool. It blows. It just blows me away. And it's just like you know. Every now and then, one, one of the simplest things that'll drive me to do something is just simply saying, "I wonder if this will work," or "I wonder how cool this would look." Mm-hmm. And sometimes it doesn't look cool. Sometimes it doesn't work. You know, I've failed probably way more times than I've ever succeeded with with stuff. But I can't attribute those successes without going through those failures. You've got to find your way. So yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But if you want to see more of that kind of stuff, you're gonna to have to wait for the inspirational interview. I think you guys are. Uh, you guys are going to like it. I think it's going to be a really, really neat thing. Yep. Um, so make sure you take a look at Kelby One. Make sure you take a look at the stuff with visual literacy. I do want to leave you with some contest stuff. So this is what you're going to do. Go over to uh, kelbytv.com slash, uh, let's see, kelbytv.com slash contest. Right. Inside here, select a show, select name, email, website. Tell us what it is that you want to win. Uh, one of two books. Right. The first book you're going to win, pow, Photoshop Diamond hey, Dirty that. Tricks for Designers by Corey Barker. There so the definitive book, if you're working in the world of Photoshop, mm. this is the book for you to get. Photoshop, photographer, designer, you can find some stuff inside of here. And that of I think course, you'll look out for my newest one. It's the Photoshop for Designers book. That's right. That is going to be out probably in the next uh, month or two. So Perfect. Mm-hmm. And then you can also win a copy of the HDR book. And this is uh, mm. my book. So uh, one of the two, if you're looking for the best techniques in HDR right. and how to be able to do post-processing in Photoshop and things like that. This Love is, that cover image. Thank you yes. very That's much. That's in Prague, yeah? Prague. Yeah. That is Dancing House in Prague. Uh, nice. It just... Happy to be able to share all my secrets with you on the second edition. Uh, but that's pretty much it for this week, guys. Thank you so much for coming out. I'm actually so pumped that that, that Conzo showed up on this. And, awesome. and I was mm-hmm. like, this is kind of neat. I'm like doing this thing and he shows up. And, and this is a guy that probably understands what it was like mm-hmm. for me growing up in that one space. So I think that that's really cool. I'm going to have to try to find a way to get in contact with him. Uh, but anyway, thanks to all of you guys for coming by. Hopefully you found this a little bit different from an inspirational standpoint, and you can go out and get out there and make better pictures. We'll see you guys next week right here. Oh, before we go, before oh. we go, you have to do this. Um, sorry about that. Uh, take a look, because we talked about this in the commercial, and I want to make sure that we give it its due. Mm. Adam Omakayas, right? Adam Omakayas is a uh, music photographer. He's got over 400 and something thousand people that follow him on Instagram. He will be with me with me here next week and i'm gonna have a very fast short show because i that wednesday i gotta go on a plane to go to dubai Dubai. Mm -hmm. but i'm gonna be here for the grid with this and we're gonna be doing something called ask el Micaias, Mm -hmm. right so what you're going to do is you're gonna go on twitter click on the tweet and inside of here do hashtag ask el Micaias. And you're going to ask a question to Adam. One of the things that I think that he does great, he's a music photographer. It's wonderful. He's got an Instagram presence. Wonderful. I think all of that stuff is great. He's worked on the Warp Tour. But what I like about him is that he's a great businessman. He's a guy, he's a guy that really understands how to be able to use the new medium mm. that we're working with between Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. 
uh, how to connect with his audience, how to be able to make his bands connect mm -hmm. with what they're trying to do in a genuine and meaningful way. Yeah. You need to be able to understand that this is the new space that you work in. And I think that Adam is one of the guys that has really mastered the art of how to be able to do that. Yeah. So I'm really excited to be able to have the time with him. I think you guys are going to learn a lot from him. Make sure that you send in your questions. You guys are going to be blown away by what Adam has to share for this. Sweet. Now I will get it. We'll leave it. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. We will see you next week right here on The Grid. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.